Hello and welcome to the Great Britain Visually Impaired Judo Grand Prix. We're right here in Warsaw, right here on these very mats are some of the finest players from around the globe who are taking part in this world-class competition. So without further ado, let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. Okay, so on that evidence, we've got an amazing show coming up for you here at this British Grand Prix. And uh, joining me today is a Paralympic bronze medalist, Ben Quilter. Ben, pleasure to have you with us on the show. Um, how much have you enjoyed this weekend so far? It's been really good, actually. Uh, fantastic to come uh, and see some world-class judo players. Um, you know, all getting ready and gearing up for, for Rio um, over in the UK and at this uh, fantastic training facility where our guys are based day in, day out. Yeah, you mentioned the Rio Paralympics. Of course, you can't really forget about it in, in this year. Lots of medal hopes heading over towards uh, towards Rio later on in the year, a few of which are competing here this weekend. So who should we look out for? We've got a really strong team going, actually. Uh, I think you you can't, um, you know, you've got, you've got to look out for all of them. I think it's, it's difficult to, to, to pick one or two. But, yeah, I think every one of the guys has got a good chance of winning the medal. They've all prepared hard and they've all put in good performances. Um, they've had some fantastic results throughout the year. Um, so, yeah, Sam, Chris... Jack, you know, they've all got you know a really good chance of uh, of winning a medal. So John O as well, once he's uh, once he's back firing on all cylinders, I think he's in the mix. So yeah, I think they they're all gonna look gonna look really good. I think. Well, that's what we love to hear, of course. And while we're here, before we yeah. head into the action, we are here in the National Performance Centre, as Ben mentioned. So before we head into the action, we thought, seeing as though we were here, we'd show, give you a little bit of a demo. If you didn't know too much about VI judo or the sport of judo itself, me and Ben thought we'd uh, show you the ropes. Well. Bended at least. But before we do, we need to get changed into our jadogi. So we're here, we're in our jadogi, and I tell you what, Ben, one thing I'd never realised until I've put one on is just how heavy these things are. They really do weigh a ton. Yeah, they're not like you wouldn't want to be wearing, walking around the shopping centre in one, would you? Well, you wouldn't want to be doing physical exercise in one, but, well, but yet here we are. So we're going to run you through, um, through the differences between <laughs> VI Judo and Judo, and the main one is there isn't really that many. It's just that you start gripped up, is that correct? That uh, is correct, yeah. That's the, the, the major difference is that you know we start with a uh, point of contact at all times, um, and apart from that, yeah, there's a couple of minor rule changes, but it's yeah very, very similar. And what is the main aim of judo? How, how do you win? So the main aim of judo is to throw your partner on their back um, or uh, a varying degree of uh, how they land will get you very different scores, to put it simply. Um, uh, and where that's called sta in your standing contest. Uh, if you go to ground, we have what's called niwaza um, and you can strangle or arm lock your opponent to submission uh, or pin them on their back. And those are, the, those are the main ways to score. The main way to score, the big win, 100 points is an Ippon, and that will, win you, that will win you the fight. And also talk to me about Shido. They are penalties in judo. Yeah, that's right. So your Ippon is uh, almost like your knockout in boxing. So the fight will be over if, uh, if an Ippon is scored. Uh, Shidos are penalties that you can pick up for a number of different things, um, through being negative and, and blocking the, 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 the fight, um, stepping out of the area, um, and generally breaking the rules really so um, yeah that, that's it in a nutshell really absolutely and how long does a fight last the fight's five minutes five minutes of, of pure hell and uh, intense intense fighting um, uh, uh, but if there's no score or it's even at the end of the five minutes it can go into golden score and then the first person to score wins the contest absolutely and four minutes for the women in this tournament as well so without further ado Ben we're, we're here we're in Archidogi you're going to give me a little bit of a demo um, I'm hoping you're not going to kill me but um, <laughs> we'll show you just how you can win a fight in in judo. So, Ben, thank you ever so much for that. I'm not sure I no should worries. be thanking you, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, that is judo. It's a very, very hard and physically demanding sport, as we've seen there from, from a very short and slightly toned down demo from Ben. Very, very physical sport. So without further ado, let's move on into the highlights. We'll start with the women's under 48 kilo division.
The first action for the match comes from Carmen Brusic of Germany and Carla Cardoso of Brazil. Brusic here in blue taking the win, holding down Cardoso for Ipon. Cardoso then took on Paulo Gomez of Argentina in the second fight of the tournament and won a very even matchup via the Shido count. Gomez then fought Brusic, who held down for Ipon after just 40 seconds of the final fight, meaning the reigning Paralympic champion claimed gold once again on British shores. First up in the men's division is the under 60 kilos, a division Ben Quilton knows a thing or two about. 13 Jadoka competing here, and Alex Beloga of Romania made a winning start to his challenge there by throwing Zal Zabrailov for Ippon in his first fight. Over on the other mat, the bronze medal matchup went the way of Anwar Sariev of Kazakhstan in golden score. And Beloga had defeated Sariev in his semi final, and his opponent for gold was to be Lee Min Jae, who looked impressive in his semi, throwing Raifan Mesquita Pontes for Ippon after 23 seconds. Lee versus Beloga for gold, and in a tight matchup, Lee fell foul of the Shido count in the end, for Shido meaning Ippon, and a gold medal for an emotional Alex Beloga of Romania. Seven Judoka were vying for the women's under 52 title and we start with Victoria Potapova grabbing a narrow win over Michelle Ferreira in the quarter final. In the other quarter Priscilla Gagne took the win over Maria Liana Mutia by Ippon to advance. And in the semis it was incredibly close between Potapova and Sandrine Martinet of France and it was the French Judoka who would advance through with a Yuko. The other semi went to golden score as Priscilla Gagne took on Eliza Stepaniuk of Russia and the Russian eventually securing the win to move into the final. Martinet versus Stepaniuk in the gold medal fight, and it was the French judoka who would strike decisively first, throwing successfully for Ippon, meaning she earned herself Grand Prix gold. Next up for the men is the under 66 kilos with 10 competing judoka. Vitaly Koryakin made a winning start in his first fight against Louis Daniel Gavrilan, whilst his fellow countryman Vassal Kutiev advanced through to the final by executing an arm lock on Jong Suk Park for Ippon. A commanding victory for Kutiev, but Koryakin seemed to be inspired by that and landed a commanding victory of his own in his semi final against Luis Perez Diaz with an explosive throw for Ippon. The final itself was a very tight affair and after five minutes of stalemate as the two Russians cancelled each other out, it was Koryakin who ultimately claimed gold via the Shido count. Four fighters competed for gold in the women's under 57 division with Lucia Arujo beating fellow South American Duro Rocio Ledesma in the first fight. Big Russian interest in the next contest as two Russians went toe to toe with Natalia Ovchinikova beating Irina Frolova in the level matchup by virtue of the Shido camp. Ovchinikova then met Argentina's Ledesma and won with a hold down for Ippon after 23 seconds. Russian then met Arujo, and the two undefeated judoka had an epic, with the Brazilian 11-1 in arrears with a second to spare, a last-ditch Wazari earned her a gold medal in the most dramatic of circumstances. The under-73s were next up for the men, and we pick up the action in the semi-finals, with Nikolai Kornhas here picking up a dramatic last-second Yuko to defeat Alvaro Gavrilan Lorenzo. In the other semi, it was Russia versus Russia, and it was Yuri Dalakian who threw Viktor Rodenko for Ripon to meet Kornhas for gold. In the final then, it was Kornhas of Germany versus Dalakian of Russia, and after a hard-fought contest after just two minutes, it was the German who came out on top via Ripon to take home the gold. So brilliant action so far. We've still got to go. Chris Skelly next up at 4GB. And Ben, a lad you know a lot about. What can we look forward to seeing from him? 
uh, Chris is uh, he's doing really well lately. He's come on so you know absolute leaps and bounds in the last year or two. So I think Chris is uh, getting you know trying to get in a good performance before um, for Rio. Um, so I would imagine you, he's going to be explosive um, and looking to to sort of send out the message today that you know he's here to compete uh, at the games. Yeah, one of our Rio athletes, of course, heading to the Paralympics. You've been there a couple of times. What does it mean to an athlete to compete at a Paralympics? Uh, it's massive. It's absolutely massive. It's Chris's first Paralympic Games. I know he was at the um, Inspiration on the Inspiration program with with Paralympics GB in London. I met him in the crowd, and uh, I think I must have given my autograph to him then. But it's, uh, yeah, no, he, he's experienced. He's been around for a little while now. He's, you know, he's, he's seen the games. So that was the luxury of it being in London. Um, and yeah, he's like I say, in the last few years, he's he started to really improve a lot. So I think for him, it'll be it'll be really big. He just needs to, you know, maintain perspective and treat it like any other day, really. I wish him all the best later on in the year. Let's see how he gets on in Warsaw. Chris Skelly had the Brazilian Antonio Tenorio Silva first up, and the Brit secured an early Yuko in the first seven seconds of the fight, which he was able to defend all the way through to the end to make the semi-finals. In the semi, he came up against Abdullah Kurumagonadov, and the Russian put pay to Skelly's gold medal hopes, throwing for Ripon after just 37 seconds, with Chris clearly very disappointed. He came back a little bit later in the afternoon though for his bronze medal fight and was introduced to a raucous atmosphere. With the crowd and teammate Jack Hodgson in the background cheering him on, Skelly secured the chokehold on Miles Porter from America and look what it meant to the Brit as he sealed the bronze. Meanwhile in the other bronze medal final, Oliver Uppmann of Germany claimed the prize defeating Antonio Silva. In the gold medal contest, it came down to Kurumagonadov versus Guan Gun Choi, and it was the Russian who threw his opponent for a second Rosari with the clock not even reaching 40 seconds. Goal for Kurumagonadov, and I caught up with Chris Skelly after the ceremony. Okay, so Chris, a bronze medal from today's uh, Grand Prix. How do you feel? Oh, absolutely fantastic. Obviously, I want it to be a gold, but, you know, under the circumstances, I was pleased how I've reset myself and came back into the bronze uh, final won it. Yeah, it was a pretty intense bronze final as well. Massive cheer at the end when you got the win. How did that feel when you heard so much noise in this home crowd? I, I kind of felt a bit embarrassed because I let out of a roar, but just the amount of emotions, because it's my first time my grand seen me fight and she won't be able to come to the Olympics. It's the first time my woman Hannah has seen me fight in VI Judo, so it was just a... A, mu a bunch of emotions just came out and I just let it all go, so I was really, really pleased. And you touched on it there, the Paralympics, massive year for yourself. How excited are you to be in Brazil? <clears throat> Very excited, obviously. Uh, but we, you know, me and Johnsy have talked about it. We're, you know, focused that we've got to be in the best possible shape for Rio. And um, if I can get a medal in Rio, that'd be amazing. Yeah, and, uh, talk to me about having an international event on your doorstep. It must be incredible in a Paralympic year as well. It's, um, it's been really weird because like, usually we're in hotels and being shipped about, but when I lost my semi-final, I just stormed out of here, went back to my room, had a sandwich and a sleep in my own bed, and it was just incredible. I was very lucky to have this before the Games. Well, congratulations once again and best of luck for later on this year. Thank you, and thank you to all the, to all the crowd who came to support us, the guys today. Thank you. With just two judoka in the women's under 63 division, it was a best out of three scenario as South Korean Song Lee Jin met Nikilina Pernheim of Sweden. The reigning world champion looked in ominous form in their first contest with Song throwing Pernheim for Ip on there after just 58 seconds. And she went even better than that later on in their second fight as she ended the fight after just seven seconds. The world champion claimed more gold in Warsaw. Nine judoka competed for gold in the under-81 division and we pick up the action in the semi-finals as Cyril Genard of France met Sebastien Junk of Germany. It was the Frenchman in white who would hold down for Ippon and advance through to the final with great respect on display between these two. In the other semi, Jose David Efron took home the win over a very disappointed Harley Arruda of Brazil. Arruda then faced Shamil Magomedov of Russia for bronze and Magomedov forced the Brazilian to tap out as he earned himself a Grand Prix medal. In the other bronze match, it was Sebastian Young who would earn the victory, as Sado Abdurakhmanov seeded for Shido. 
Into the gold match, it was Jonard versus Efron. And after three minutes with only a Yuko between them, Jonard successfully threw for Ippon in a painful loss for Efron. He claimed silver, Jonard taking the gold. The women's under 70 category was very closely fought for the most part, with five judoka competing in a round robin format. First up, we see an all Russian affair as Tatiana Savastyanova here in blue secured a late Wazari to edge out Olga Zabrotskaya. Zabrotskaya then took on Lucia Beskovic of Croatia, holding down for Ippon, and that would prove crucial later on. The woman to beat, though, in this division was Alana Martins Maldonado, as the Brazilian judoka looked unstoppable throughout, holding down Breskovic here for her third win in a row. And the bronze medalist from last year's World Championships in Seoul this time had gold around her neck after a flawless competition. Zabrotskaya taking silver as her two victories came via Ippon. So the next British interest here at the Grand Prix, Sam Ingram. And Ben, a player you know really, really well, of course. Three Paralympics now for him. He must be so excited this year. What can we expect from him this weekend? Uh, I think you, what you always get from Sam Ingram is consistency, a very, very strong, uh, positive performance. And I'm sure he'll be you know, really, really interested in coming here in front of a home crowd and, and setting, his, setting his stall out for what's, what's ahead in, uh, this summer in Rio. It must be such a perk as well to play in such a world-class environment against international athletes on home soil in a Paralympic year as well. It doesn't always happen. No, it doesn't. Uh, you know, it's really, you know, we're really lucky to have the, 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 some of the best in the world come here. You know, it saves us, you know, flying around the world, feeling jet lagged, a bit ropey. So now really good to, to have them come to, to England. And we, you know, it's a really good run out for our boys. Good opportunity for some of the young guys to get some, some mat time. Um, and yeah, just generally to raise awareness and get, you know, get in front of these opponents and practice with them on the training camp. Wish him all the best. Let's see how he gets on. First up for Sam Ingram in the under-90 division was Tony Walby of Canada, and the British Tadoka made light work of this fight, throwing for Ippon after just 22 seconds. Ingram then met Anatoly Shevchenko in the semi-final, and after a close fight eventually secured an arm lock for Ippon after two and a half minutes of the contest. In the bronze medal matches, the American D'Artagnan Crockett defeated Tony Walby with a powerful second Rosari. In the other bronze medal contest, it was extremely tight between Roberto Silva and Anatoly Shevchenko. With three Shido apiece, the Brazilian triumph via a single Yuko. In unfortunate circumstances, the gold medal match was a walkover in the end for Sam Ingram, as Jorge Lezina of Argentina sadly withdrew through injury. Not quite the way he was expecting to take gold, but gold it was for the Great Britain. I caught up with him after the ceremony. Okay, Sam, gold medal on your chest at the end of the day. How do you feel at the end of the event? Uh, it's great. Uh, I mean, coming out on top is always a privilege, and it's one of these things that obviously I aim to do. And yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy with the result. I, I can't not be really. And a big year coming up for you. Your third Paralympics this time in Rio de Janeiro. Can you put into words how excited you are for it? Um, it's weird because as the, as they're going on, obviously I'm excited. But as they're going on, I think I'm probably getting less excited about them and getting more used to them. Do you know what I mean? But Beijing was my first, London was the big one, as they say, uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to this, but in a different way, I think each game has a different element to it, and I feel differently about each one. A big international event in a Paralympic year on home soil, that must be a pretty special experience. Yeah, um, this event's been great for me, obviously, the result, but also just getting to fight again in a decent Paralympic level and being at her, like her home in Walsall is great you know um, hopefully we can carry this event on it's close to the center of excellence I just fly from Edinburgh it's easy enough for me uh, but if we can keep this event going and just get the Paralympic world of, of judo stronger and more stable that'd be great best of luck once again for Rio later on in the year congratulations thank you really. thank you thank you The final weight class in the women's division is the over 70 kilos and saw two judoka pitted against each other in a best out of three scenario. Arena Kachan of Belarus here in white versus Cristela Garica of the USA. It was Kachan who won the first fight throwing powerfully for Ippon there and the silver medalist from last year's world champs looked in fine form. 
In the second matchup, Kachan went to ground to pick up the win again via Ippon as the Belarusian built towards her first Paralympics in some style, claiming gold. So you join us just ahead of seeing Jack Hodgson in action for the first time. And Jack is a player you know a lot about, obviously as part of the GB team, heading to the Paralympics later on this year. What can we expect from him this weekend? Uh, again, I think, you know, Jack is uh, he's in the heavyweight category. Um, he's, he's wide open in this category and he's well and truly in the mix, I think. Some really good players in there, uh, but he's shown a lot lately that he's, you know, he's good enough to compete. So I think exposure to, to some of those better players on, uh, you know, as often as possible um, is going to do him the world of good. So, yeah, I think he's going to look to not only learn a lot here, but to really stick in and, and give it a go. So, yeah, fingers crossed he, he performs well. Yeah, and you can hear the noise that has been generated behind us. It's really loud here in, uh, in Warsaw. What's it mean to compete in front of a home crowd? Obviously, you had that at the Paralympics in London, but this yeah. is not quite that scale, but it still means a lot, doesn't it? Oh, it really does. You know, your friends and family don't get many opportunities to come and, and, and experience, you know, your, your, what you train for day in, day out. So, you know, to have the opportunity to come and watch, you know, somewhere locally is, is incredible. Um, you know, it really gives them a little bit of a boost. And I think, you know, it's, it's a, different, diff, a different dynamic, you know, all of a sudden to have people behind you wanting you to win it can it can really spur you on so yeah i think they'll enjoy the atmosphere and um, it's brilliant to see so many people here and supporting the event let's see how we get on So Jack Hodgson had two other judoka to contend with and came up against the Brazilian Williams Arojo first up Hodgson got locked in a hold that despite his very best efforts he couldn't get out of, leading Arujo to take the victory. This meant Hodgson had to beat William Montero Lopez to have any chance of silver, and indeed he did, throwing for Ripon just six seconds into the fight. Williams Arujo then triumphed over Montero Lopez, meaning that Brazilian took home the gold medal, and it was silver for Jack Hodgson. And the gold medalist and great to the last great category of the day, ladies and gentlemen. So Jack, silver for you at the end of the day. How do you feel after that performance? Uh, great, I came away with the medal. I mean, it's not the colour I wanted, but medal's a medal. It's competition at my first home event, so to have the support we did as well was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and it's a big event as well in terms of the year as well. Big international event, big international year obviously with the Paralympics coming up later on. How excited are you for that? Of course, um, can't, words can't describe it really. Uh, later on we've got you know, the, obviously the Rio Paralympic, which is what we're all working towards. It's just a warm-up event for us. Get to have a feel and get to train with the guys in the training camp who we're going to be again so it's a brilliant opportunity fantastic yeah how nice is it to be able to have that on you know your home turf an international event in a paralympic year oh it's, it's amazing it's have the, all the family around whenever we score or whenever we even come on we get a great big cheer it's really really good op opportunity and it's great great support thanks for talking to us jack congratulations again no problem so that was just about to do it here in Warsaw at the Great Britain Visually Impaired Judo Grand Prix. A fantastic weekend of competition, Ben. Yep, really good. Some excellent performances from the guys. Um, I think, you know, everyone's learnt a lot. Some brilliant judo on display uh, and the crowd were brilliant. You know, the, the support from, from everyone has been absolutely second to none. So, yeah, can't ask for much more from an international tournament. There we go. And that is just about time for us to say goodbye. My thanks to you, Ben, for your compliment you. this weekend. Really enjoyed having you around. And for you, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.